Welcome to Energy Radio. On this episode, we are live on location, which is great. Um, the uh, or the chance to come out and be at a, a, a site at a project that we're going to talk about. And I'm here with um, somebody I've got to know well and become friends with over the years. And uh, I'm very happy to have Doran Marion uh, on the show today from what I call International Wax, but I think it's the International Group. Right? Yes. So, Doran, welcome. Um, would love you to kind of introduce yourself to the listeners, uh, and then we'll, we'll have a chat. Yeah, uh, thank you, Matt, for the invitation. Uh, I'm very glad that you guys are here on, on site uh, for this podcast. Um, like you said, Doreen Marianne, um, I've been with the International Group, International Waxes, like you said, for more than 21 years by now. Um, I'm currently the manager of uh, energy engineering and maintenance, so I'm supervising um, the powerhouse uh, maintenance department and the engineering group. Um, I've been in this position kind of since we finished the Cogen mm. project uh, in 2019. Uh, prior to that, I had various roles uh, starting from a refinery analyst in the beginning, um, re-redacted the operations manual for refinery, and then I had a short uh, period as maintenance supervisor. I helped plant engineer for a while, and then uh, I got this to this position right now. Cool. Excellent. Uh, before we get into the project, um, maybe give us a, an explanation of like the facility that we're in right now. What is it? What do you do here? That kind of stuff. Um, the International Group is a privately owned Canadian um, company. Um, it's the biggest independent uh, wax producer in North America. Mm. Uh, it's been uh, functioning on this uh, location uh, roughly since 1945. Wow. Uh, business started with a small garage. Uh, the grandfather of the uh, uh, the present owner started the business. The business was uh, handed over generation to generation. So it's a third generation of owners. Um, the business has been expanded over the years um, from a Canadian owned uh, business to an international company. We have acquired uh, a few companies, two refineries in US. Uh, we have a few blending facilities also in mm. various locations in US. And um, um, basically, we are de-oiling the wax in our processes. Mm. Um, we're getting the raw materials from bigger refineries and uh, some of it, probably a good chunk of it from our sister plants uh, from US. Okay. And uh, we are de-oiling uh, that, um, that mixture that we call it slack wax. So it's a product that comes it, out of product that comes out of the, the bottom of the, uh, the towers okay, in, in okay. big oil refineries. Um, and um, de-oiling, de-odorizing, decolorizing, and then um, most of it is shipped bulk uh, by uh, road or by uh, rail. And we have a small uh, department for solids where we make uh, mm. slabs or granules or chiclets and we sell that back to our customers which are making the final product. Mm. So you're not going to see a final product from us, right. but it's that raw material for um, the uses of the waxes are um, industry-wide, uh, starting from candle business. Uh, packaging is okay. a huge um, uh, customer of ours. Uh, tire industry, chemical, mm. we're getting into food grade waxes, uh, ah. personal care, pharmaceutical, uh, fire logs, you name it. Wow. Um, okay. so, um, we also have um, um, a business in US for bee waxes, so we kind of close the loop on, okay. we have veggie waxes, uh, all our waxes are biodegradable, so okay. which is uh, a plus for our customers, yeah, yeah. Uh, knowing that. And um, I believe we have um, over a thousand codes for finished waxes that we can ship to our customers. And we proud ourselves uh, with the fact that we can ship one pair or a hundred rail cars. Okay. Uh, so we're very, um, very flexible uh, when it comes to the, uh, the magnitude of the order. Right. As um, opposite to the big oil refineries who they do have businesses similar to ours, but they only have a few 
uh, wax grates and they ship in bulk. So Got it. Um, we have an R&D lab on site which uh, can come up with any formulation within 48 hours wow. uh, to a customer's okay. uh, needs. And we can put that in production immediately and uh, um, ship that to, to the customer. Wow, very cool. As it is a wax uh, business, uh, we are very energy intensive from hydro to uh, thermal energy to um, utilities bought uh, to sustain the, uh, the production process, water, nitrogen, right. propane, all that stuff. So um, it's a big challenge controlling the cost and uh, reducing the uh, consumption of yeah, yeah. all those uh, utilities yeah. and energies. Yeah. yeah, which is what we're going to talk about a lot today, but I think it's for our listeners, it's important. I'll try to paint the picture of this particular facility is in Toronto, and if you could go outside where we are right now, it's completely surrounded by a residential neighborhood. Yes. Um, yeah. And that's it's been that way for a while, right? And it's just getting more and more populated, right? In the beginning, there was farmland all around uh, the, the plant, but then they started to build residential, and um, we had to act to reduce the noise uh, to, yeah. to the neighborhood. Um, we're in compliance with all the uh, bylaws and the laws, uh, provincial, local, provincial, federal, as far as emissions, no, um, air and noise, um, and everything we do um, it complies with all the regulations in place um, exactly for the same reason. Yeah, uh, I remember that in the, when we were talking about the project in those early days, that was from a no, particularly a noise and even just an optics perspective with especially the big condos that are going up to the north, yes, right? Like yeah. that, that was always a, a big focus was how do we do this project without, um, you know, because you guys are great, you know, corporate citizens in the area. How do we, you know, preserve that and Maintain ideally make that. it better, yes. you know, throughout the project. So um, maybe start the, the story kind of at what, from my understanding, was at least one of the main kind of impetuses for this project. Like we met you, but years ago, but prior to that, you had had an, a major event here that kind of kick-started the whole Cogen journey. If, you know, at the risk of bringing up a painful memory, <laughs> can we ask you to start there and then paint the picture? Uh, that was the uh, the dreaded February 15, 2015, <laughs> when uh, uh, a chain of uh, um, unfortunate events um, conducted to a plant shutdown and uh, um, a total freeze up of the plant. Uh, it was a, a combination of a power failure, um, a um, curtailment process uh, in progress from Enbridge. Mm. Um, we are an interruptible customer for our um, boiler for steam production. And that means that in winter time when the pressure in the system um, drops, Enbridge has the option to call us and ask us to uh, get off the, uh, the gas network. Um, our boilers, the three traditional boilers that we had in plant up until then, uh, they were bo um, dual fuel, so um, we can burn in our boilers the oil that we're separating in the uh, refining process, we call the foot soil. Right. So the burners are equipped with the oil burners um, also in the boilers. And because of the power failure and um, all that, we lost the steam production. The, our oil uh, has some content of wax still left in, in there, so it froze up and we couldn't produce any, any steam to uh, maintain the piping um, uh, nice and hot. So um, we froze up uh, the plant and it came with a very expensive bill. Um, at that time to repair, to thaw uh, the, the process. But it took us, uh, I remember, almost a week to start up the refinery. That was the main priority, to start the refinery and then to start uh, the other pl uh, parts of the plant. So um, that was the, uh, uh, the moment when we decided that we need to go to a backup system, which um, it was played with. The idea of a coaching was uh, on the table probably about two or three times um, okay. in my time at IGI. Until even, then. even prior to that? Prior to okay. that, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it was um, a Toronto Hydro driven project for a 20 megawatt um, unit to 
um, to be uh, dispatched when prices are right and the loads are needed in the system. So it wasn't with the direct benefit to IGI, but to uh, the local utility company with some benefits, but the, um, the project never came to, to fruition. So after the February 15, 2015, uh, we decided that we need to start looking very seriously for a cogen so we can have a redundant power right. system and uh, um, it's a long story how like you said before we met you we uh, we started to discuss with other um, engineering companies for um, a different type of uh, cogen than what we are r running right now um, but um, the uh, the waste heat wasn't enough for our, for our process and luckily I met uh, CM Engineering to one of these energy and utilities uh, right. shows if you remember and mm -hmm. um, I I think I told you I think I met you that, at that time and I told you that we're working on a cogen and with an internal combustion engine but uh, we're not sold completely on the solution so um, you mentioned the gas turbines and I said mm, okay let's look at that and yeah. see and after that it was just uh, I'm, I'm gonna call it now a breeze yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from yeah from that point on because it was very clear that the gas turbine and the waste heat boiler attached to the, uh, the yeah. turbine is the way to go and this way we would uh, drive all the uh, savings uh, with this project we were lucky enough there was uh, the um, incentive program on right. the table from the government administered by the uh, local utility company uh, which helped a lot on the decision making uh, process so by I think it was by 2016 end of 2016 uh, we had the new um, engineering study done with a gas turbine and we had to go again to the owners of the companies saying that we don't want to spend 5.7 million dollars we want to spend double right. on a gas turbine and these are benefits and savings and payback so it was it was an easy approval process at mm -hmm. that time yeah. and uh, then everything started yeah, yeah yeah i remember meeting you um i don't think i was the first person to meet you I, um but then i think you met uh Ed uh, from our team, and then, anyways, I we met pretty quickly, and you told me about the the internal combustion engine, and and then you told me about your heat load, your steam load. And yes. Like, uh, right away, I'm like, no, no, this is a gas turbine. <laughs> yes. But then we went. Um, you guys, you know, you you wanted to do your due diligence. So remember, we went, we went on that road trip and went to a, a bunch of different sites. Yes. Uh, and Richard came with us too, and, yep. and we saw both kind of in one day. And uh, I think that was that was a good experience too for you guys to see. Yeah, uh, it, it was uh, it was very clear that the gas yeah. turbine is is the uh, the way to go on this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On this so tell project. us about what you have. So tell us now about we'll, we'll talk about kind of some of the key aspects of the project. But what's here today? Like what's the finished project? Um, the finished project is um, Centaur Forty uh, gas turbine built by Sora Turbines in San Diego. Uh, with a uh, 3.5 megawatt engine with a 3.8 megawatt generator attached to uh, to the turbine, um, a waste heat boiler that um, has for our plant the uh, electricity load um, gives us about 15 to 16 thousand pounds per hour free steam, unfired mm. steam, um, and we have. Uh, two duct burners installed uh, to supplement that uh, steam load to about 90,000 pounds, which is our peak load on, on winter time. Yeah. Um, with that, we had to install a gas compressor. Uh, it, it is a filter screw compressor uh, to boost the uh, 60 PSI uh, natural gas uh, from the grid from Enbridge to 250 to feed the turbine. And um, this way, the old boilers, they became backups. So right. the cogen um, um, is providing the electricity in the plant. Uh, we have a minimum 200 kilowatt um, um, draw from the grid by uh, contract with uh, Toronto Hydro. So when we're connected to the grid to have a backup, uh, to have redundant um, power right. uh, feed, we have to take 200 kilowatt from there. 
and all the protection and control that was uh, prescribed by CM Engineering and approved by Toronto Hydro is in place to prevent the export of power to the right. grid. Yeah, that was one of the first discussions with Toronto Hydro that they don't need any more generators <laughs> <laughs> on the grid. So, yeah. um, although that that may be changing, but that's a different discussion for another we, day. We complied with, with that request. Right. Uh, so. that, yeah, and 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 there was a big you know your switch gear. Your front, your kind of service entrance changed dramatically too, right? Yes, because um, before the cogen, we had two separate feeds coming into the plant, into um, step-down transformers. One was um, above ground, and one was uh, underground. With the new switch gear that was uh, purchased and installed with the cogen project, uh, we combined those two into one single feed into the plant, and. Um, uh, we had to buy one of the. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the story with the uh, Toronto Hydro uh, transformer that um, we had to buy because now that transformer was inside of our distribution system, and that's a whole podcast altogether. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> want to talk about that. Yeah. No, but, thank uh, you. no, thank. No, um, Eventually, we got it, so it's uh, it's still running. Uh, it's being maintained, and okay. um, um, we have a spare that would fit both uh, yeah. step-down transformers, so we're, we're ready for the yeah, fully, yeah, yeah. fully redundant on, on power. So, the, so right now you meet all of your electrical loads and all of your steam loads from the cogen, is that right? Yes. In wintertime, we have to supplement with our um, um, traditional boiler. Oh, you do? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're getting close to the full load of the uh, gotcha. waste heat boiler and okay. we need a bit of uh, reserve on, on boiler 4. But since then, we decommissioned two uh, of the old boilers. Mm. Um, so uh, we have uh, only two left, uh, mm. which supplement each other to 100,000 pounds per hour. Okay. And that's the backup of the waste heat uh, gotcha. boiler. Okay. Um, the load, the electrical load, yes, we have uh, plenty until right about September when it's very hot and humid and yes. uh, the refrigeration system in refinery works really hard. So uh, we, <laughs> we reach the uh, turbine's uh, performance. Uh, oh, you load. do? Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So um, that's why we stay connected to the grid to okay. have that. Uh, back up in okay. place, yes. Okay. Uh, we picked a 2.9 and in those uh, hot, humid days, of course, the efficiency of the turbine drops like a, like a rock and uh, it was only about 2.8, so we tripped the, uh, the turbine really? the first year. So okay. we put in place procedures and uh, we're watching the, uh, the turbine performance in those hot, humid days and yeah. uh, make sure that we're connected to the grid to have the, uh, okay. the, the necessary spare on the... Now you, electrical load. you can you, you connect to the grid then, but you, you can also island from the grid. Yes, the, the idea on the cogen was to have fully redundancy and uh, dual feed and the option in between all of them. So we can run all on the grid, all on the cogen on island mode, like you said, or we can um, prescribe the, uh, the import uh, level right, that okay. we need to get from the grid and um, supplement with the uh, the gas turbine yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. to the plant load. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and it you know um, my recollection of the project. Like, if if anybody was able to come here and see the site before and after, you'd unless you knew what to look for, you'd be hard pressed to find. You know where like it's it, it's by no means a greenfield, uh, and that was that was some of the challenges both in design but especially in construction was where. You know, there was really only one place on the property that this fit, fit being a, kind of, kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then actually, um, you know, designing a building that fit, and then, uh, and then actually building it. I don't know if you want to talk with some of those challenges of just the being a, a brownfield and an operating plant at the same yeah, time. Yeah. So right? going back to what you said before that, um, in the old times, the plant was surrounded by farmland and then starting to build everything around. Real estate is at a uh, higher uh, high, uh, price for us. So uh, in order to make the floor room for the cogen, we had to excavate, uh, I think we hauled about 250 dump trucks 
uh, from um, oh, yeah. it used to be a, 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 a dirt a dirt yeah. berm around yeah. two of two of, of our uh, oil tanks, and we had to build a retention uh, retaining wall uh, to gain the the floor space, and then uh, we leveled off, had to relocate some tanks, the oil and grease tanks that we had to relocate, and. Basically, the entire project was a custom job, totally. a total yeah. custom job. Yeah. Uh, if you remember when we are working on the building, we said, well, let's cut this corner, let's fit this <laughs> in here, let's do this. So yeah. Everything is as we, as we did um, at that point. So um, th there was a lot of work pre-cogen. Uh, um, just to make the room, right. the, the floor space, uh, relocate the existing equipment that was uh, functioning on, on that site and then uh, uh, build build a building around the two big pieces of equipment because right. that was a complete other challenge. Uh, the location um, on the north side of the plant is uh, at a lower elevation than the street right. in the front so we had to drive, basically drive uh, the boiler and the gas turbine package uh, with the SMTPs uh, that you only see in Discovery Channel, <laughs> I like to say. We and, should get that and, video and footage, if, if off of you, if we can, because uh, some of that video you means. have of, of the, because it was, you know, you, there was a couple, I, I remember there was a couple utility lines that y it was unavoidable, you had to dislocate, but, but other than that, the plant continued to operate. Yes. And, and it was one of those things where going over it was way yeah, too it expensive, wasn't, I think. It right? was too expensive and there was uh, um, requiring shut down the street here in the front oh, that's for right. about yeah. a week. And uh, the crane guy says, no, we're not going to bring that crane. We'll find another way. And boy, am I glad that they did. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite the experience, uh, moving the two, yeah. uh, the two loads. So... Um, once we had them in place, the boiler and the, uh, the gas turbine, we started basically to build around them the right. whole building. And, and it was a challenge in itself to, uh, to build a building around um, yeah. the two pieces of equipment in place. And especially that you have multiple trades on site and uh, um, you know the value of this piece of equipment and this and the guys right. working around and don't touch that, right. make sure you don't drop, you don't, so we had to, to yeah. be very diligent yeah. uh, during construction. Yeah, you were, because you, of that. you mentioned your titles earlier, but you were also construction manager, really, you know, every day you were out yes. there for yeah. a big portion of your day, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, this is uh, because of the, uh, the fact that we, if you remember in the beginning, we looked at the second-hand gas turbine. Right, yes. To right. Try to control the cost from going right. from a combustion engine to Yes, turbine, and then we we're lucky enough that somehow solar turbines find out that we're looking for turbines, and uh, they knocked on our doors, and we we're lucky enough that we got a brand new turbine to right. for the cost of a used turbine. And you, and you didn't have to explain and that you're buying a Rolls Royce for your company. <laughs> <laughs> and that was that was a huge achievement for us. Yeah, uh, um, the efficiency of the entire project went up. Uh, yeah just by doing that so I remember, yeah, yeah. Um, that was uh, that was a really nice thing to, to, yeah. to happen at that point yes and then so when did I mean uh, construction and commissioning had their normal kind of uh, you know challenges but when, when did it go into full operation do you remember um, construction started on first working day of 2018 uh, January third. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. We broke ground. That's the best time to construct in yeah, Canada, yeah, right? Winter. To pour foundations yeah, yeah, yeah. and all that. <laughs> yeah. And we finished by December 2018. So okay. it was one full one year full construction. Year. Yeah. And um, coming January 2019, we started uh, testing and commissioning on the gas turbine. Um, and then we had some challenges on. Uh, synchronization with the grid. Oh yeah, right. Uh, the ferro resonance um, right. <laughs> process that was happening, and uh, we we're lucky enough that we had a really good uh, electrical engineer from CM yeah. that took that to heart, and uh, he spent a lot of time uh, troubleshooting um, the ferro resonance that was happening, and uh, he came up with a solution, and um, we were able to uh, to pass that. Uh, 
milestone. Um, so by, I think it was by July 2019, Okay, everything was ready to run, but because it was such a complex project and brand new plant for, for us, we started to run only on day shift oh, yeah. and right. get the operators used to. We had to do, go do training in San Diego with, uh, right. um, with, solar. Uh, with solar turbines. Then we brought trainers from solar turbines on site for the guys working shifts. So to get them right. um, accustomed to uh, the new piece of equipment. And we started to run the, uh, the cogen only on days. And we did that for about two months and uh, when we are comfortable enough with this, um, we went to Toronto Hydro and said we need to start working on the official in-service date. Mm, uh, right. There was an MVP oh, uh, yeah, right. coming from Toronto Hydro to uh, get all the information um, for the uh, project, the equipment. Uh, uh, we had to provide some data that was collected already on the uh, on the PLC on our price right. servers yeah. uh, from that commissioning time to prove that the efficiency of the project and the thermal efficiency and all that it was right. as we said it was going to be. So by uh, I think it was November 12, 2019, it was the official in service okay. date. Okay. Okay. So okay. from that point on, we ran 24/7. So you're you're just past the four-year mark. We are four, almost four and a half now. Four and a half, yes. yeah. Yeah, wow, wow. yeah. Wow, wow. You, you. I, it always struck me that you, you talked about sending your guys for training and and then bringing trainers. Like, the engagement of your team was pretty important all along. I think, right? Yes. Yeah. And we knew that we have to engage them, being a new piece of equipment and yeah. kind of in the uh, uh, state of the art. Uh, right. Gener electricity generation with a waste heat boiler attached, um, including all the balance of plant uh, equipment and that was done with the cogen. Um, we had to bring them on and we had to show them that this is state-of-the-art facility and we need um, a bit of uh, extra knowledge to operate this and uh, um, I think that paid off. Cause, uh, Were you concerned that they would not kind of um they wouldn't kind of see it for what it was and maybe wouldn't treat it with the proper kind of respect or like what was your what was your what were you trying to get there the, that was one of the concerns because you're bringing steam makers into electricity generation right, right, so right. Um, that doesn't fall under the tssa jurisdiction but because you have the waste heat boiler attached to the gas turbine automatically had to be under TSSA jurisdiction and the jurisdiction of the uh, chief engineer that we have on site, first class TSSA right. engineer. Yeah. So we wanted to show them that the, the money we spent and the technology that we brought in the plant is going to pay off and it's going to be a, a huge step forward for the plant and including for them because now they work on upgraded equipment uh, new um, electricity generation yeah. equipment that not too many people in GTA can say that they they do that. Yeah. And um, the funny thing, we do get st uh, power engineering students for co-ops here. Oh yeah. Uh, at least twice a year, okay. we have uh, power engineers. To, we give them the chance to to get their steam time for fourth class, and they're all. The one question that I ask them after two weeks, I say. Tell me what you like the most in here, and every time the answer is the cogeneration project. Yeah. So we only seen that in uh, on books. And, oh, really? Uh, yeah. Okay. But okay. he says we never. So having a, a an experience, hands-on experience on a cogen uh, system, yeah, uh, I think gives them that. Uh, that's awesome. Sharp edge when they go back to school yeah. and they, yeah. Uh, yeah, so. And the, and the guy's got a new control room, right? Like right near there, and the, that must have helped. Yeah, the, um, the control room was a huge upgrade from what was there before. Um, the, the control room, uh, the office for the, uh, the chief engineer. Oh yeah, right. And the electrical room that yeah. um, was part of the building uh, in the cogen, that was a huge uh, upgrade. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. The, the the guys were very happy okay. to move in, into that yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, new yeah, control yeah. room. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And so now, you, so you've got kind of four and a half years of operating history. I mean, are there certain things you're tracking? Are there certain things like you're, I know you're a big kind of metrics numbers guy. I mean, how, how do you look at the project relative to, you know, you were doing this before, you put the, you invest all this money, you know, are you hitting your numbers? Are you exceeding your numbers? What are the numbers you're looking at? So the main, the main driver all these years was to maximize the savings. Yeah. Uh, knowing the numbers behind the, uh, the project, um, I pushed all the time to keep the, the plant running on island mode. Mm -hmm. And in the, I think it was year two and three, we were able to do that with no issues. The equipment was brand new and uh, right. we didn't have many issues. Uh, in the fourth year, we started to have some issues with some equipment yeah. um, that was fixed right away, but it was minor shutdowns here and there that yeah, okay. uh, took time away from electricity. I'm tracking electricity generation, of course, uh, the cost, the unloaded cost uh, of uh, electricity generated on site. Um, now, I'm still referring to the price of electricity that was in the DES right, before right. the cogen, which was one of the highest ever in yeah. North America yeah. at that time, and that's yeah. why the project made so much right, right. so much sense. And um, I think we're still hitting those numbers. Okay, um, maybe we added like half a year to the payback period, okay. but um, okay. overall the the project is still uh, yeah uh, performing as as design and and uh, and um, I mean obviously on the the natural gas side. The savings are probably. How how do they compare on the natural gas on the steam side? <laughs> on the uh, they, uh, on the steam side, producing uh, steam on the Herzig on the waste heat generator, um, um, it's happening at ninety two percent efficiency compared okay. to eighty one okay. for the traditional boilers. Right. Okay. So um, we're pushing everything that yeah, we can yeah, yeah. on on the plus. Uh, like I said, the unfired steam portion of the um, yeah. of the project, it's almost the size of one of the small traditional boilers. So I'm getting right. that free of charge right, right, uh, yeah. right off the bat. So yeah, yeah, yeah. the savings are okay. Um, okay. Are, so in, ter in terms of the owner saying, I invested all this money, am I getting a return? Kind of the, the, the data is saying that, yeah, maybe it's a little bit longer than anticipated, but it's for the most part is giving them the returns that they were looking for. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, th the other thing that was added since we commissioned the project was the carbon tax, which- well, um, I've heard about that. Yeah. Um, hurts the, uh, the, the payback, but yeah. um, there's another aspect that um, we talk about, and that's the reliability. Right, And right. The, the, the energetic safety of the plant um, because before the cogen, uh, we are subject to a lot of uh, trips and brownouts from the grid, and um, that caused production to go down at least two hours each time that okay. that happens. So yeah. any storm, any uh, weather event, any any switching in the uh, in their transformer station yeah. would have um, follow-ups on our plant with a shutdown. So. Uh, that's not something that we quantified right, okay, yet, okay. but uh, we don't have those anymore. So, okay. and is that because you're predominantly islanded from the grid? Is that why? Or? One because of that, but if anything happens on the grid, um, the breaker will open and we stay on island mode, and our and that part works, is that's is, pretty is successful. Protected. Yeah. We had once one incident, so a really bad storm okay. that. Um, the over voltage travels so fast through the uh, breaker that tripped the gas compressor. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. And then everything mm -hmm. shut down yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. uh, from there. But um, um, we are we're very reliable in generating. Wow. There was uh, at least three times I can think of when the entire neighborhood was dark and we're bright and, That's awesome. and running because of the so cool. uh, cogen. That's so cool. Um, Another thing that we also did since then, if you remember when we designed the, the cogen, we left provisions in the field for a blackout generator yes, connection yeah, box. Yeah, right. We bought that oh, generator yeah. and installed the generator because um, during a, a power outage, an extended power outage, 
we were saying we're going to rent a generator, but when everybody wants a generator, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> how do you get that generator right, right. on site quick enough to? So we purchased and installed that Black Start, and now it's fully hardwired. Right. And we're also using that on our regular shutdowns to energize the main building so we don't shut oh, down the main building. Okay. Because that generator is just idling, it's sitting there. Right, right, right. So during okay. our shutdowns, we have a manual switch for a main office and we keep those guys in the office. And oh, at the, the office on the. On the, the office. Okay, cool. Okay. Right now, we're working to power up this side of the plant yeah. from the same one okay. for shutdown purposes. So yeah. um, it's a Slick. triple. Yeah, Triple that's cool. Pay, pay back that's on awesome. That, that's on cool. that generator. That's cool. Yes. Was there any other kind of? You talked about the power quality and interruptions. Um, did any other kind of unexpected outcomes that came out of the the Cogen project itself? Unexpected? Yeah. Um, no. 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 Um, I'm happy to say that it, it's performing as yeah. Yeah. as designed. So yeah. we don't have any major. Um, we did replace the engine. Um, I told you before the podcast. Yeah, I was going to ask last, about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, last year in October, we right. were which was kind of on schedule for yes, what they were planned, have. planned Plans, and scheduled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah. close to thirty-six thousand hours. Wow, runtime. Wow. Yeah, wow. And um, we signed the long-term maintenance agreement with okay. solar turbines from the get-go. Yeah, and um, that includes an engine overhaul for the, the duration of the contract for five years with the possibility of extending to another five after that. Right, okay. So we took full advantage of that yeah, and good. we got the uh, the engine replaced in, I think it was eight days. Wow. Um, wow. They came on site, uh, shipped the, uh, uh, the engine to site, pulled the old one out, installed the new one, did all the tests and we're running since then with no issues on, the, on the gas turbine. That's amazing. And and did you see an increase in the efficiency with the new one? Like had it had it been tapering off and then it? Uh, no, no, no. Okay, no, just no. It's pretty yeah. steady all the way across. Steady, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I said, the uh, when we oh, yeah. visited the DeSoto uh, facility in Texas uh, yeah. from solar turbines, uh, they were talking very high uh, yeah. about yeah. the cleanliness of our uh, engine and the gearbox. Right. So, right. Wow. They showed us actually samples from other engines. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. And they looked so it's not really? just us. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were saying good. that to to yeah, everyone, yeah, yeah. but yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I believe a good maintenance uh, keeps the equipment oh. running as as designed and totally. uh, efficient as you can. So. Um, the air filters uh, for uh, combustion right. with the HEPA, the HEPA option that we uh, installed. Um, the gas compressor is in a good location and it's so quiet that I'm, even today I'm still amazed how quiet that gas compressor oh, yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, the gearbox, the oil polished as per solar turbine specifications right. in the beginning. So. Um, and all the maintenance done on time. Yeah, and yeah. You're not gonna have any, yeah, any yeah, issues yeah. with, yeah, with that's that. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. So if you if you went back in time to like you know 2014, 2015, and could do it over again, is there anything you'd do you know differently? Um, or or yeah, do, if you had one, if you had a chance to do it over again, would you do anything differently? Differently, uh, no. But probably there would be a few lessons that right. um, okay. I learned uh, for an, another. Another big project construction yeah. like this, yeah. but uh, yeah, no. What would those lessons be then for for somebody who might be doing a project like this? You know, uh, um, one would be, and I think we spoke about this in the past. Uh, the importance of the feed study. Yeah, agree. Uh, the more you do on in the beginning, the better you're gonna be when you go to yeah. construction and commissioning. Yeah. yeah. Uh, budgeting also is yeah. a huge uh, deal because. Uh, um, if you don't do your budgets, you're gonna be out of. Uh, and those two uh, things go line. hand in hand, right? And, like and the more yes. you, the more you could progress the design, <clears throat> you know, the better you're gonna have for a capital budget. Right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And for the person out there that are looking to construct something like this, um, get the guys who know what they're doing uh, assigned to that project. So right. right. Um, they uh, during construction, I think I spent. Hundred percent of my time was mm -hmm. only right. construction yeah. management at that time. So, 
the more time you spend there and make sure that things are happening right. the way they are supposed to happen, the better you're going to be after. And the proof is in the... Yeah. I, st I still wake up every once in a while in a cold sweat thinking, Doran's calling me about anchor, <laughs> anchor bolts. <laughs> well, those, those are the little snacks right, on, yeah. on, well, on every project that you totally. have to, to work with. But uh, uh, at the end of the day, um, it was a successful project and yeah, it yeah. is uh, driving a lot of savings for us. Yeah, and that's huge. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. Um, so, you know, it begs the question, what's next? I mean, what's the next big project for you? Uh, um, particularly, maybe maybe before even that, or part of that, like particularly as you think about, you know, your your still you still have emissions at this site. You still have so you've you've helped on the cost side. You've helped on the reliability side. I mean, is there plans from an emissions perspective or or other big capital projects? Well, the the word of the day is uh, emission reduction, decarbonization, and yep. um, get a hold on spendings as far as carbon tax is, yeah. is involved and I think the entire industry is hurting on, on that. So um, we are openly looking to solutions to maximize the efficiency on existing combustion processes mm -hmm. that we have in the plant. Right, right. Okay. Um, getting a better control on emissions, or reducing emissions. I think we're still far away from capturing and mm. um, sequestration. You don't, on you don't use CO2 in your process, do you? <clears throat> no, no, sure. no. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, with that, um, it's probably finding ways to cut back on consumption, yeah. being very efficient on whatever is it's running in the plant right now. So um, there's, there's not too many big projects because the uh, the cost needs to be controlled and yeah. um, just our luck, um, the COVID, uh, two or three years COVID period and then uh, the inflation and the recession that we're fighting right now yeah, yeah. Uh, has a huge impact on, uh, on the spending right, for right, yeah. um, an industry like this. Um, and it's hard, I mean, for industries like yours that are very thermal intensive, yes. the solution is not obvious. Like, it, there, there's it's no not, silver bullet, no, right? No, there's no opinion. silver bullet. And the one thing that I'm fighting currently is that everybody comes and knocks on our doors and say, hey, there's funds available for decarbonization, for uh, green hydrogen, blue hydrogen, <laughs> this. But there's no actual solution, technical solution right. to be applied immediately. I right. mean, yeah, I understand there's funds, but the the technology is not there yet. Right, right. Most of it is an, an incipient phase in the designing and prototyping uh, this type of technologies. But uh, to have a technology that you can purchase and install in the plant and see an immediate effect, Oh, it's going to be a few more years before before that happens. Totally, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What um, this is a little bit off the topic of the, you know, as we kind of wind down on the on the project itself. But I mean, you've had, you know, from my view, a really good career in in pro, in, in the process, but also on the energy side. You're, I know you're big with uh, Association of Energy Engineers. Uh, you're a, you're a CEM, right? CEM, yes. Yeah. What what would you say to somebody listening to this who's maybe on the front half of their career? Not to say that you're on the back half of your career, but you know, you're. What would you say to somebody who's kind of starting their career? You know, from from your vantage point, what you've learned, what are some of the I don't know, skills or mindset or or things that you know you would give as advice to somebody early in their career? Um, I guess the most important is to take passion in mm. what what you're trying to to achieve mm. so uh, if you do this by obligation That's eight good. hours at work and go home at the um, uh, no good things are going to come out of that but uh, if you use those eight hours nine hours ten hours I'm going home after eight hours normally so I yeah. don't want yeah. anyone right, to right. think that <laughs> <laughs> I sleep here but um, if you take passion and you you follow through and you put your heart into into that project, yeah, um, you, you're gonna excel. Of course, you need the knowledge and sure. all the technical background and experience. And but if you have a target in your career 
and you know, I want to be on this side and uh, I want to do this type of work, you better start studying about that and mm. get the best you can so you can be the champion of that yeah. project yeah. on site. So, yeah. Yeah. That's so true. And in that passion piece, and like I grew up in the energy industry, I knew I liked the energy industry, and then I went and worked you know, for OPG, and I realized I like what they do, but I do not like that big company environment, yes. right? So yeah. it's, it's, there's so many layers to that, and, and learning early on what you love, uh, to your point, it makes, you know, there are hard days, right? It's yes. a, yeah. it, you, you can work through a lot of that stuff if you like what you do. If you don't, like, I'm sure it's terrible. Right. Um, like you said, a big company compared to smaller companies where the red tape is non-existent and you can take your project, your thinking to your boss and you can get approval um, within days, right. not to say within minutes, uh, that sub for something that makes sense, um, makes a huge difference and that increases your willingness to be passionate about what you're doing because if you follow the red tape in big companies i heard so many stories like the one you said and they always knock down and say no we're not no. doing this no so uh, after a while you kind of lose the interest yeah, in right. in being successful in that in I'll that never, company i'll never forget early on when i was coming here you 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 mentioned to me you know, Matt, as you drive by the office, look for this particular vehicle. And <laughs> if that's there, the owner's there, right? And I, yes. you know, I knew you guys were presenting to him frequently, and and uh, this project was either going to happen or yes. it was going to be clear it wasn't happening. Yeah, like there was no, no being stuck in purgatory. You know, no. like it wasn't. It was going to be either this is going to happen, or it's it's not going to happen for these three reasons. But it wasn't going to be somewhere in between, right? But also, this is because of what I said before: the work that you put in the front end, and you do your homework diligently and you present the owner of the decision factors in your company, um, the project with all the paybacks and all that, it's going to be an easy approval process. Right, if, right. if that lacks confidence, or yeah. um, you're not going to get the project yeah. Uh, yeah. approved. Yeah, totally, yeah. totally, yeah. yeah. Um, as we kind of finish up, Doran, anything else that we didn't cover that you were hoping that we'd cover or anything about the project or, you know, kind of energy projects in general that we didn't talk about? Um, I wanted to mention quickly, um, when I mentioned the long-term maintenance oh, agreement yeah. um, for the gas turbine, um, another very important process in there was to secure critical parts for mm, the uh, yeah for the equipment yeah because um, there's thousands of parts in in this whole plant so delivery yeah they're all included in the long-term maintenance agreement right but when it comes to delivery and this is before covid before the supply logistics issue yeah there was items with 17 18 20 weeks delivery so if you had a breakdown and they say yeah we'll pay for the part but it's 20 weeks delivery so what do you do so that was another project that i pushed hard to get it done and working with solar turbines and they had really good specialists in this field of, mm. um, uh, and how did you how did you come to determine like you could have bought everything right yes but that, that would have been a, a hefty yeah yeah, yeah. Hefty like price. how did you determine what you <clears throat> needed to buy um we mostly rely on recommendations okay. from the manufacturer yeah. from solar turbines they had the uh Part the spare parts um, classified in three tiers. Okay, absolutely needed. Um, short delivery and long delivery. With so uh, we divided that plan on three years and uh, budgeted accordingly. Oh, okay. So we bought uh, all the critical parts uh, in three years, and now they're sitting on the shelf. And okay. every time they come and they need something, they it's take there. it off the shelf, and they order the part. To, uh, to put it back on our shelf. But that, that is part of why uh, the cogen was performing so well, because right. we had very short yeah, uh, okay. outages yeah, because yeah, yeah. of lack of parts. Yeah. Nowadays, it would be even harder with right. the supply logistics oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. issues that we have. Um, on a different type of equipment, we got 72 weeks deliveries quoted, so it's just... Uh, it's just crazy. That's wild. So planning and budgeting is is very important. Yeah, uh, yeah, for yeah, this. yeah. Yeah. No, I appreciate you sharing that. And that's that's really why, uh, you know, I want to do this podcast so that people can listen to folks like you who've been through this and who've been successful and have, 
you know, done some really good things and, you know, I hate for them to miss out on, you know, that on their project. Right. So, yeah. um, yeah, no, this, that's, that's really good. Thank you, sir, for, I know you're busy, uh, with this, uh, plant and, and lots on the go, but thank you for carving out some time to be on the energy yeah. radio podcast. Uh, never boring. Um, always fun with you. So <laughs> thank you very much for being on the thank podcast. Thank you, Matt. It's yeah. been my pleasure. Okay. Thank you for coming. Yeah. yeah thank good. You. Thank good. You. Thank and to our Great listeners, time. as always, thank you for, for tuning in. And, and this has been a great conversation with Doran Marion of the International Group, Energy Champion Extraordinaire, uh, and, uh, and now podcast veteran. So uh, thank you for listening. And until uh, next time, uh, stay safe in what you do. And let's focus on uh, making the world a, a better and a more functional place.